air fried pork chops. And not just air fried, but battered and air fried pork chops. The kind you serve with a couple of pieces of white loaf bread. And Louisiana, a well-known company that one of my favorite batter and shrimp roll companies I've ever used, is now making a batter specifically designed for air fryers. And, and that's, a, that's a big deal if you ask me. I mean, they, they make one for pork, fish, and chicken. Well, I posted a video yesterday of the chicken where I fried four uh, chicken thighs, and I'm going to say it. It was the best chicken I've ever cooked here. I, and I've cooked a lot of chicken all kinds of ways, but oil frying, deep frying, the best fried chicken I've ever cooked. I'm expecting the same thing out of their pork recipe. So we're about to get this started. We're going to use a Ninja Foodie grill, which has an air frying function and a probe where we can watch the temperature. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's batter and air fry some pork chops. Okay, so I'm going to explain some of this right quick because when we come back, a lot of this will be done. Here's what we're working with. Louisiana air fryer for pork. For you, there's a, a big deal if you ask me. The first step it wants is to moisten up to two pounds of pork thoroughly in egg wash or ice cold water. Well, same thing that I did with the chicken the other night. I want to see if it's which one's the best. So I've got two eggs right here. I'm going to put two or three tablespoons of milk in there and make an egg wash. I got water. I'm going to put ice in there. The other one will obviously go right here. One will go in the ice water. One will go in the egg wash. I'm going to divide the contents of that bag into two Ziploc bags. I'm going to shake them up, press them around. The Ninja Foodie grill, which it is a grill, but it also has an air frying function along with dehydrate, roast, bake, and it's a grill. But the reason we're using it is it has this probe. And I'm going to be able to probe that uh, pork chop and watch the internal temp instead of what they're going to call for right here, which is air fry at 400 for 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I don't have to go by time because I'm going to put that uh, probe in and my temperature, my internal temperature will be displayed right here. And when it gets to what I think is good, we'll flip it. And then when it gets to what I think is good, we'll take it out. It's all look and feel as it cooks. If it looks good, we'll pull it out. Now I am going to time it right here. And that's just for a rule of thumb for anybody wanting to know now those are pretty thick pork chops, and again, you you have to you know use that as a rule of thumb, and then make just make sure you temp your pork or whatever, and make sure it's safe to eat. So, I'm going to get that part started. When I come back, I'll either have this preheated, and uh, we'll be ready to drop those in. But I'm going to get that started, and I'll be right back. Okay, we are ready. I've got an ab food light, so that's what we are about to do. Here is the one that's been in the egg wash. It's going to stay on the left. And here's the one that's been in the ice water bath. And it's going to be on the right. Now you notice there's no oil out here because I have not used any oil. And I mean, I didn't even spray the basket with oil. We're going to start the timer. I got to start the temp probe. I'm going to leave it set at 165 because I'm going to pull it. You would, in fact, I'll show you this. There's the internal temp right now. Right here is the USDA guidelines. They lowered, in fact, it was a lot longer ago than I thought. 2011, they lowered pork to 145 degrees Fahrenheit to be safe to eat. Now, I won't say, I'll say this, is that sometimes if you put really pink pork, I mean, at 145, it's a little, sometimes a little pink. It makes people, some people edgy. So I usually take mine to 150, 155, but you don't want to go a lot more than that. You'll dry it out. But anyhow, we're off and running. We're going to watch the time, flip those in at some point, and uh, when they get to looking like they need flipping, be back in a minute. Okay, so keep in mind now, these are a little thicker pork chops than, than possibly than what they call for, but they said 10 to 15 minutes. So we're pretty much in the middle of that. We're at 99 degrees, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see what they look like. As a matter of fact, I'll show you as I open it, because this is the first time it's been opened. And you can see, they look excellent. So, I'm going to make sure I get the camera set back up right. I'm just going to flip them over. Hopefully without damaging that crust. And that went well. 
and that went well. <laughs> we, I'm going to move that just a little bit off that wall. We are back and running at almost nine minutes. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so at 15 minutes, we're at 144 degrees. I'm about to pull them at that exact moment because I think anything around 155, which is what carryover, everything's completely white, no paint, and it's still juicy and not uh, dried out. Now there's how they look, and I mean, I, I think you'll agree, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna get the camera set back down. We're gonna get those out of there. And the probe will continue. I don't wanna break that crust up. I'm gonna leave the one that was in the egg wash on the right. Of course, the one with the probe is the one that came from the water. The probe will continue to track my temperature. So we're gonna watch it. I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see how high it gets, but we're already past safe levels. And uh, I, like I said, to get, get the pink out, I may, yeah, I'm good with it going to 155, 160. Anyhow, be back in a minute. Okay, it seems like it has really slowed in temperature going up. It, this is the highest number I've seen, 154. If that goes up or changes, I'll let you know. For added information, at 20 minutes or so, around 18 or 19, it started falling. 154 was my highest temp. So it takes it about five minutes to turn around. So you need at least five minutes of resting. That's my point. So I'm going to do a couple of things and get this ready. We're fixing to see how it tastes. Be back. Okay, so welcome to the life of, a, of eating supper with a YouTuber. Because <laughs> it takes a few minutes. I have to get my, my thumbnails and all going. So we're somewhere around close to 13, 14 minutes since they've been done. Here is the temp. I have to hold that down and it will display the internal temp of that probe, which is 145. So it's fell to about the levels of where you would eat this at. I mean, that is a perfect temp at almost 30 minutes. Now, I'm going to remove the probe so I can show you these a little bit closer without trying to move the camera and all. But now, you can see, I don't know how it's gonna taste. I got a good idea but it looks really good. And you can see the oil, and you can imagine, I'll try and show you what's in the bottom. I don't know how much will be there. I can say this, with that chicken the other night, there was a lot of oil. You can imagine. I mean, if, if you were deep frying this, there's nowhere for that oil to go. It stays in there, plus you add some. Uh, my point is, air frying, I'm not even watching calories, although I probably should be. It's got nothing to do with why I'm using an air fryer. The fact is, it's that easy. And if you watch my chicken, fried chicken video, you'll understand how much I feel strongly about it. I'm gonna show you, if I can, what came out of that, whoops. And there's what came out of those two pork chops. The other night with those four chicken thighs, and if you do it, you'll see what I mean. That was a complete, that pool was pretty much all but right in the center. So. I'm going to uh, get those ready. I'm fixing to cut them up. We're going to eat a piece of it. I'm going to move them up there and, and uh, cut them up. But right now, we got the egg wash here and the water wash or the water <laughs> batter there. As a matter of fact, before I move them, just to keep from getting anything confused, we will cut them open right now to see how they look right in the center. All right, here comes the water, the water base. And. I think you'll agree, wow, if I kick that camera one more time, <laughs> I think you'll agree, that is perfectly done, spot on, perfectly done pork chop. Now, for the egg batter, egg wash batter, uh, same thing. And I, I, again, I'll say, I, I'll predict this. <laughs> In the near future, especially with this kind of stuff happening, people making these uh, simple to use, get out of the cabinet and put in a bag instead of mixing flowers all purpose and self-rising and blah, blah. It's all right here already. Kitchens will, they'll start designing kitchens different to accommodate air fryers, pressure cookers, and all the new things on the market. So I'm not going to get on that, on that, uh, 
preaching again. <laughs> I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to cut that up. I'm going to taste some of it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now for the most important thing, the taste test. And I'm going to do the water-based chicken, um, I'm sorry, water-based pork chop first. And uh, I've already showed it to you. It's perfectly cooked. I can tell by looking, but... Absolutely perfect. <clears throat> Spot on. It doesn't need anything. There is nothing wrong with the water base, using the water in that batter. Now, I am going to try the egg wash, but again, it had to really stun me to, I guess water's a lot easier, and you know that. So, I mean, let's see. And, it looks perfect, <clears throat> same as the uh, water did, whoops. <laughs> And I might pick, hmm, there may be a slight difference there. there. There just might be. I do kind of taste that egg, but, or maybe it's a little crispy. I, I was the same way with the chicken the other night. I, I think I decided by the end that the egg wash is a little bit better. Whether it's worth the trouble or not, or if you don't, my main point is if you don't have eggs and milk, water. Water works fine. They're fantastic, man. And I'm going to tell you something. Supper just got a lot easier to put on the table. And I said it the other night, I'll say it again, thank you Louisiana for putting this product on the market. And I think a lot of people will be doing it soon. Again, it is uh, one of the greatest things in the kitchen since the microwave, the air fryer, the pressure cookers, everything that's out there now that's new, I'm, I'm blown away by. And my entire kitchen and cooking uh, methods have completely changed in the last two years, and it's because of these devices. Hey, I love y'all all, and remember, like I said the other night, kitchens bring families together. You start doing this kind of stuff, and the house fills up with uh, the smell of this, they're coming down to see what's going on. I don't guarantee it. Hey, again, I love y'all all. Come back to see me. Like, share, subscribe if you don't mind. My big head will be right here. If you hadn't subscribed, please do so. Bye-bye, y'all.